In the last video, we made a subsurface scattering shader, which is just perfect for a waxy candle. So today we'll make the candle flame on top to finish off the asset. We've got our subsurface scattering shader here from the previous video. We just chuck that onto a quick candle mesh, then pop a point light on top where the flame should be. It pretty much just works out of the box. One waxy candle, done. Now time for the flame. The best way to make a candle flame is with a camera facing billboard. Now, even though we could just paint a flame or use the photo directly, we'll actually split our texture up into separate RGBA channels so that we can play with the colors independently in shader. In Photoshop, the way I like to split up channels is to use channel mixer adjustment layers in separate groups. One for red, one for green, and one for blue. Pop a channel mixer at the top of your group, go to each channel output, and zero out the colors that we don't want. The only other thing to do is to make sure that each group uses a screen blending mode. Now that that's set up, anything you paint white inside that group will only contribute to that particular channel. We'll use the red channel for the center of the flame. Paint a nice crescent flame shape in that group. Green for the outside and tip of the flame, and blue for the base. You could also put a circular gradient in the alpha channel, which could be useful for adding a fake glow rather than doing it as a post-processing effect. Save that out as a 32-bit TGA or leave it as a PSD and then head back to Unity. Okay, make three adjustable colors, each one multiplied by a channel of the main texture, and then add them all together and multiply it all by a brightness modifier at the end. You can use additive blending mode, or my preference is to use pre-multiplied and also pipe this into opacity as well, which can give you more color saturation on brighter backgrounds. So now we need to make it flicker with the magic of UV distortion. You'll need a full color noise texture for this, so here's one I prepared earlier. You'll also want to make sure that it's relatively smooth and well blended, otherwise the changes in the motion will be too abrupt and jarring. You can just drop the noise texture's max size down to about 64 pixels, and filtering will take care of this for you. We're going to pan this noise texture, so you're going to want to add in some controls, like an adjustable flicker speed. You'll also want a multiply on the noise texture's UVs to control the scale of the noise. Remember, with UVs, adding to them offsets the texture, whereas multiplying them scales it. So panning a noise texture's UVs is simply adding the time to them, and for this to work, the texture must have its wrap mode set to repeat. Panning noise against other noise, or in this case using it to distort UVs, is the basis of many really cool effects. We're going to take this noise and add it to the UVs of our flame texture to distort it. Because the noise is panning upwards, this distortion should resemble the flame flickering over time. We only need the red and green channels of the noise because a UV map is only two-dimensional, and we also want to subtract 0.5 off both of these channels so that it will be offset in all directions and not just positively. UVs tell the GPU what part of the texture to draw on what part of the mesh. So by adding noise to the flame's UVs, we're distorting how the flame texture is drawn on the billboard. Applying this distortion uniformly across the billboard doesn't look right, as the flame is no longer grounded near the wick. To remedy this, we can multiply the noise by the v-axis of the UV coordinates. It will depend on how your mesh is mapped, but by default, on undistorted UV coordinates of a basic quad or billboard, the U channel is usually a horizontal gradient of 0 to 1 from left to right, and the V channel is a vertical gradient of 0 to 1 from bottom to top. So multiplying by V will fade out the noise nearer to the bottom of the flame. Okay, our flame is moving, but if you just leave it at that, then every flame using the same shader will be identical. So add in the X and Y of the world position to the UVs of the noise, just to create some offset variation. Now no two flames will be alike, unless they're vertically stacked, but that's unlikely, so close enough. Pump the brightness up, and the visuals of our candle flame effect is complete. The glow is added as a post-process effect on the camera. We could do this in shader as well, by taking the circular falloff that we previously stored in the alpha, multiply it by the outer color, and then adding that in as well. The only remaining thing to do is to make it a camera-facing billboard, which thankfully Amplify Shader Editor does through a simple tick box. It's also worth using your own quad model with an offset pivot point, so now the flame will stay upright and pivot from the wick, regardless of the orientation of the candle. And that's it! Our candle flame is done. Combined with the subsurface scattering shader on the candle itself and a flicker script that I like to put on the point light, which just moves it around a bit and changes its brightness over time, we have a completed candle asset. If you like what we covered in this video, please click the like button and subscribe. It helps a lot. But if you didn't like it, please leave a dislike and let me know in the comments what I can improve. If you'd like more information about the topics covered in the video, please check out my Patreon. Patreon, Patreon, Patreon. We have a more detailed written explanation of the shader as well as all the source files that you can play with, take part, and use in your own projects. Thank you so much for watching. I love games! See you next time.